In their minds, they were revolutionaries. David Cameron and businessman Lex Greensill transforming the way business is done here in Saudi Arabia. Lex Greensill advised Cameron in government, and when the former PM left Number 10, he went to work for Greensill's finance firm, which was meant to help companies pay their bills on time. That dream collapsed in March. Today, David Cameron published his texts and emails, revealing the excruciating ends he went to lobbying government as the firm's problems grew and grew last year. At the beginning of April, David Cameron texted the most senior civil servant at the Treasury, Tom Scholar, saying he was genuinely baffled that Greensill was being rejected for financial help, calling the situation bonkers, and that he was now about to phone the Chancellor and Michael Gove. Everyone. He went on to text Michael Gove, recognising he was manically busy at the height of the pandemic, which was bloody hard, working extremely well, but asking whether the Cabinet Minister had a moment for a word and that Mr Cameron was on this number and very free. Still getting nowhere at the end of April, Cameron texts the Chancellor again, asking whether he could try and give it another nudge to get it over the line. No success with him. In June, Cameron went down the chain of command, texting one of Rishi Sunak's aides, Richard Sharp, asking whether there were any updates on his talks with the Chancellor. Today, Lex Greensill appeared in public for the first time, just as the watchdog announced it was launching an inquiry into whether criminal activity had taken place. He began with an apology. I bear complete responsibility for the collapse of Greensill Capital. To all of those affected by this, I am truly sorry. But many more questions followed. Are you a fraudster? No, Ms McDonough, I am not. And how much has the firm's collapse cost the public? What has been the loss to the taxpayer? There has been no loss to the taxpayer. Why did you have David Cameron as an advisor to your company? The Greensill Affair is the tale of how a little-known businessman dazzled the most senior politicians and officials for years with his claims that he'd invented a new way of doing business. Now that collapse, costing thousands of jobs, potentially billions of pounds of your money and a criminal inquiry into whether someone broke the law. The question is just how could so many people, especially David Cameron, let themselves get dragged into this? David Cameron rinsed through his web of contacts for Greensill. WhatsApps to Rishi Sunak, a meeting with Matt Hancock, text to Nadim Zahawi and Michael Gove, then to Jesse Norman, John Glenn. He tried Treasury officials Tom Scholar and Charles Roxborough and eventually mid-level political aides Sheridan Westlake in number 10 and Richard Sharp in the Treasury. How one company got its demands heard like this has rung alarm bells. There's a lesson here, you know, that, that we need to have double the degree of scrutiny and control that we thought we had in order to make sure that vast amounts of public money isn't wasted. When people have been at the top of the government, um, they should walk away from it. David Cameron will have to explain why he didn't walk away on Thursday when he appears before MPs. Sam Coates, Sky News.